In this video, we're going to use Cock to prove a distributive property of conjunction and disjunction. So let's first state the property. It says for all x, y, and z in prop, if x or y and z, then x or y and x or z. In order to prove this, let's start by introducing the x, y, and z and an assumption A. The assumption A is a disjunction, x or y and z. The way we use an assumed disjunction in a cock proof script is with the destruct tactic. So in this case, we can destruct A into two assumptions, B and C, and these assumptions will be in two different sub goals. We'll use the bullet point, in this case minus, in general, minus, plus, and star, to structure the sub proofs. So we have two sub goals now. In the first case, we have an assumption B of X, and we need to prove a conjunction X or Y and X or Z. To prove a conjunction, we use the cock tactic split. After we use the split tactic, we'll have two secondary sub goals. In the first of these secondary sub goals, we'll need to prove the claim X or Y, and in the second of these secondary sub-goals, we'll need to prove the disjunction X or Z. We'll use the plus bullet points to structure the proofs of these secondary sub-goals. Now let's look at the first of these new sub-goals. We need to prove X or Y, and we have the assumption B. So clearly what we need to prove is X, the left-hand side of the disjunction. We can commit to proving the left-hand side of the disjunction using the cock tactic left. So now the claim we need to prove is simply X, which we can prove using exact B. We could also use the cock assumption tactic. Now, as we move on to the next of these new sub goals, we use the plus to say we're done proving the previous sub goal, and now we're going to concentrate on the next one. So we need to prove X or Z. Again, we'll prove the left-hand side of the disjunction, which we can prove using exact B. Now we put the minus bullet point to say, we're done with the previous top level sub goal, and we're now going to prove the next top level sub goal. For this sub goal, we again need to prove a conjunction, but we also have an assumed conjunction. In particular, we have this assumption C of Y and Z. How can we use an assumed conjunction in cock? Again, we can use the destruct tactic. In this case, we'll say destruct C as D, E. Note that this time we don't have a vertical bar separating the D and the E like we did when we did destruct A as B vertical bar C. And that's because it's a conjunction, it's not a disjunction. So there are not two cases, there's only one case, and in this one case we get both assumptions D and E. D is an assumed proof of Y and E is an assumed proof of Z. Now again, we're trying to prove a conjunction, so we'll use the cock tactic split, and we'll get two new sub-goals. Again, we'll use the plus bullet point for these secondary sub-goals. Let's look at the first of these secondary sub-goals. We need to prove X or Y, and in this case, we'll prove the right-hand side of this disjunction. We'll prove the Y. So we do this with the cock tactic right. Now the claim is Y, which we can prove with exact D. Now we use the plus bullet to say we're working on the second of these secondary sub-goals. Again, we have a disjunction to prove, X or Z, and we want to prove the right-hand side of the disjunction, the Z. So we use the right tactic and then exact E. So this proof script gives a complete proof for this proposition, but let's take a moment and learn a bit more about this destruct tactic. Recall that we used the destruct tactic on A, which was a proof of a disjunction, and we used the destruct tactic on C, which was an assumed proof of a conjunction. And you see the difference is in the destructuring patterns, whether or not we had a vertical bar that indicated two cases or something disjunctive, or whether or not there was simply a space indicating something conjunctive, giving more than one assumption in a single goal. Now, in fact, you can put very general destructuring patterns when you use a destruct. We could have, when we did the destruct A, instead of putting the C in the second case, we could have already put the destructuring pattern for the D and the E. 
If we do this, we'll never have an assumption C, and we won't need to destruct it in the second primary case. So in this case, the proof script looks like this. Another useful fact to know is that we can do these destructuring patterns when we're doing an intros. So we never needed to have an assumption A in the first place. We could simply have the destructuring pattern giving the B and the D and the E instead of the A in the initial intros. And in that case, the proof script looks like this. Now let's take a moment to consider what choices we had during this proof and what difference it would have made if we made different choices. So let's go back to having an assumed disjunction A. Instead of doing a destruct on this A early, let's use the fact that we're trying to prove a conjunction and split into two sub-goals of proving the left conjunct and the right conjunct. So after doing the split tactic, we have two primary sub-goals. In one case, we need to prove the claim X or Y, and in the second case, we need to prove the claim X or Z. Now we can destruct the A, and we'll use the combined destructuring pattern to give two cases. In one case, we have an assumption B of X. In the other case, we have two assumptions D and E of Y and Z, respectively. And this gives two secondary sub-goals. In each case, we need to prove a disjunction, the disjunction X or Y, but we have different assumptions. In the first case, we'll prove the left-hand side of the disjunction, so we use the left tactic, and then exact B. In the second of these sub-goals, we'll prove the right-hand side of the disjunction, the Y, and we'll do this using the right tactic and then exact D. Notice in the previous proof script, we did exactly the same thing in a different order, so I can copy the corresponding line and simply paste it into the proof here. I don't need to retype it. So this finishes the first primary sub-goal, and the second one will do largely the same thing. We'll destruct the A using the general destructuring pattern. I'll do it by cutting and pasting. Then we'll have two secondary sub-goals, which I'll use the plus, and I can simply copy and paste the corresponding lines from the previous proof script. I'm proving the left-hand side using an assumption or the right-hand side using an assumption. So it didn't really make a difference whether I split the conjunction into two sub-goals first or I split the assumed disjunction to get two sub-goals with two different kinds of assumptions. In both cases, I end up with four sub-goals to prove. The four sub-goals are proven in a different order, but it's the same process to prove each sub-goal. Now notice in this first primary sub-goal, we never actually used the assumption E. And in the second primary sub-goal, we never used the assumption D. In the destructuring pattern, we can get rid of assumptions that we don't need by simply naming them using an underscore. And Cock will interpret that to mean that you're not actually going to use this assumption, so it throws it away. So in this first destructuring pattern, we'll instead of DE, use D underscore. So Cock will forget this second assumption. In the second destructuring pattern, instead of DE, we'll use underscore E. And this means Cock will forget the first assumption. So what have we seen in this example? We've seen how to use Cock to prove facts about disjunction and conjunction. When we want to use an assumed disjunction, we use destruct. When we want to use an assumed conjunction, we also use destruct, but with a different destructuring pattern. And these destructuring patterns can be moved into the intros. When we want to prove a conjunction, we use the Cock tactic split to split into two sub-goals. When we want to prove a disjunction, we either use the cock tactic left to commit to proving the left-hand side of the disjunction, or we use the cock tactic right to commit to proving the right-hand side of the disjunction.